thanks to the booming bat of Jason Hayward. Three outstanding starting assignments, and oh, by the way, Craig Kimbrell, too. And one of baseball's best hitters. The Braves made a statement over the weekend with a three-game sweep of the first-place St. Louis Cardinals. And things are getting even better. For tonight, Brandon Beachy is back. 13 months after Tommy John surgery, the Braves' right-hander heads back to the rotation to face the Rockies and their all-star, Michael Kadire. Tonight, it's game one of a four-game series. Braves-Rockies baseball starts now from Turner Field. It's a beautiful night for baseball in Atlanta as we welcome you to Braves country and Turner Field for a big four-game series between the first-place Braves and the Colorado Rockies. It's a very special night. For, for the last 13 and a half months, that man, Brandon Beachy, has had many medical hills to overcome. Tonight, he faces the Colorado Rockies in his first start back from Tommy John surgery. And hi again, friends. Chip and Joe back at the ballpark. Before we get to Brandon Beachy, let's talk a bit about the big weekend for the Braves. How about the three-game sweep over the St. Louis Cardinals? It was outstanding. The Braves pitching is really to be commended. They really held down that juggernaut offensive ball club the Cardinals are and over 140,000 folks here over the weekend to see it everybody's riding a nice high coming into this game so the Braves uh, with injuries in their starting rotation Paul Mahalam's hurt Tim Hudson is hurt they've gotten Alex Wood in rotation now it's Brandon Beachy's turn and he's worked so hard to get back remember he was real close to coming back to the rotation about uh, a month ago and then he had a little setback had a little tendonitis nothing unusual for a guy that's coming back from Tommy John surgery but the work you're seeing here from last year before the injury outstanding as he was leading the majors in ERA and he's hoping that he can return to this kind of form now is it too much for us to ask for him to pitch exactly like he was probably so but tonight he'll get a stern test from a very good Colorado offensive lineup and Joe needless to say Beachy can't wait to get back on a major league mound tonight are you asking if I'm going to expect to be perfect because yes I am Absolutely. Is that realistic? No, not at all. But but that's not going to stop me from uh, holding myself to, you know, the standard that I've always have. I love that. I me love too. the way Brandon Beach is approaching this start tonight. Me too. He's fired up and ready to go. And ready to go are we. It's game one between the Braves and the Colorado Rockies. Plenty of news on the transaction wire. The Braves made some moves today, and Tom Hart will tell you about those when we come back to Atlanta right after this.
with him. Okay, thank you. Okay. With two days left in the non-waiver trade deadline, it seems like the Braves made a couple of moves. Brandon Beachy returns from Tommy John and will make his 2013 Major League debut tonight. But that's not the only move. In fact, Frank Wren went into this with an opportunity to find a left-handed reliever. It was a bit of a challenge with a lot of teams looking for the same arm. Well, he finally was able to accomplish that. This afternoon, the Braves announced a trade with the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, acquiring veteran Scott Downs who has been sensational over his last 30 appearances with an ERA under one. Since 2007, for pitchers with more than 350 innings pitched, only Mariano Rivera has a lower ERA. So the challenge became, how do you find a guy who fits in perfectly with the team, and what other pluses are you looking for? According to manager Freddy Gonzalez, experience was one of them. That's a good pickup for us, a veteran guy, guy uh, um, a guy who's been around for a while. And, uh, Really, really having a good season, uh, and you know, he's going to take a little, take some burden off of Avalon. You know, we put a lot of, a lot of stressful innings on a young kid. So, bringing a left-handed guy, a veteran guy that uh, can take some of that burden off of him, it's it's a it's a really really good move. He brings that experience and that ability to get. You know, the best left-handers out, and that's something we needed. We needed to give Avalon, uh, who's done a tremendous job since Ventures and O'Flaherty went down, we needed to give him some reinforcements and the, the ability to use someone else in that situation. Downs flew in from Dallas, where the Angels were set to play the Rangers tonight. He has been activated. Reliever Cameron Lowe has been designated for assignment. Two new arms available tonight for the Atlanta Braves in many ways. The first and foremost is Brandon Beachy, back from Tommy John after a tremendous season as a rookie. Another one, great one last year, and he's ready to go tonight for the Braves. After sweeping the best offense in National League, the Cardinals are gone, and now it's a Rockies' turn. Chip and Joe will have the call when we return. I don't. Part by ATT Ubers, by Delta Airlines, and by Ford. It's a beautiful night in Atlanta, and the Braves and Rockies are ready to go. And, Joe, you know the man at the center of the diamond is raring to go, too. Can't imagine what the last 13 and a half months have been like for Brandon Beachy getting ready to resume his big league career for a first-place club tonight. Yeah, it's very exciting. Glad to see him out there. 
And a nice crowd filing in for game one of this series. The Rockies starting lineup is presented by their skipper Walt Weiss. And Atlanta native Dexter Fowler leads off their Toyota starting nine with T.J. LeMayhew at second base. Then you've got the Thumpers, Carlos Gonzalez, Troy Tulowitzki, Michael Kadire, and Todd Helton. Will and Rosario, a lot of raw power behind the plate. Nolan Arenado is their young third base prospect. And Jorge De La Rosa has got a tenant win season working for the Rockies tonight. Brandon Beachy's minor league numbers, his rehab starts. He was 3-4 and four with a very good ERA. A few walks mixed in there that he'll have to try to cut down on beginning tonight, but a very low opponent average, too. His Ford keys to pitching success. Well, as you might imagine, no caffeine needed tonight for Brandon Beachy. He'll be fired up, and you just hope that he's not too excited and too amped up, and that might affect some movement on some of his pitches, and not used to hooks. And that applies to Colorado. They've just been home for 10 days, and you don't see many curveballs at Coors Field because it's hard to throw them. Brandon's always had a good curveball. We'll see if it's effective against the Rockies tonight. Twenty six years old now six three two fifteen out of Kokomo Indiana. So welcome back Beachy and of course all of us thinking about Tim Hudson who we understand back home after his surgery on his broken right ankle. That's certainly good news. As we look at the Braves defensive lineup Tudasilovich is in left field Gaddis behind the plate Johnson Simmons Ugla and Freeman around the horn. Jason Hayward, good work for Atlanta in center field with Justin Upton playing in right. Braves a little short-handed right now in the outfield. Trudoslovich in left, and they've still got Constanza on the bench. But uh, with Reed Johnson suffering a leg injury last night, looks like he's going to be waylaid for a day or two. Might even be DL'd. Uh, Rains to be seen if the Braves will add some depth to the outfield. So Dexter Fowler is the Colorado leadoff man. 12 homers, 31 RBIs, and a 271 batting average. And Beachy's first pitch in at 92 for a called strike. Warm night, 83 degrees. And Fowler, a shot to right. That's headed for the corner. And that'll two hop up against the fence. And Fowler glides into second with a leadoff double for the Rockies. Dexter's really been struggling. Six for his last 35. He banged up some fingers on his bottom hand on a bun attempt, and it's really affected him left-handed, but certainly not on that swing. He got a good pitch to hit. Didn't miss it. 15th double for Fowler. And Beachy immediately to the stretch for D.J. LeMayhew, former Cub. Who they got in a deal for Ian Stewart and Casey Weathers. And LeMayhew's knocked in 15 runs. He, too, hitting 270. And he pushes a bunt. And that's an easy play for Brandon. Fowler to third with one out on the sacrifice. Scattering report on D.J. LeMayhew is that he's a baseball player. He does and gives you what you need when you need it, whatever it is or wherever it is. And he just did that by getting the runner over. So let's see how the Braves pitch Gonzalez with Tulowitzki waiting on deck. And Joe Gonzalez, another Rocky that's had some finger problems. Well, you couldn't tell it by the numbers he's putting up. First in homers, sixth in RBIs. But just three for his last 20. First pitch, and it's 1-0 Colorado. So Carlos Gonzalez chases home Dexter Fowler, his 68th RBI, and the Rockies score in the first inning. Let's see if this pitch was up a little bit. If he's amped up and he's maybe trying to throw it a little too hard, and even on a breaking ball, you're not going to get much but spin if you overthrow it, and that was a hanger. Might take him an inning or so to try to relax and remember that uh, remember how to do it at this level. He's been pitching a lot of innings on rehab, 40 of them in all, but that's not at this level. You heard uh, 
Tom talked about in the pregame show, and Joe, you mentioned it as well. There aren't any Troy Tulowitzki's playing at AAA. No. Well, he's got his first look at Troy here tonight. And those are very impressive numbers when you factor in Tulowitzki missed a month with a fractured rib. A terrific shortstop. Behind nothing and two. Yeah, he's a solid defender too. Uh, he's, I guess, the most prolific offensive shortstop, certainly in the National League. But I think that overshadows some of his good defensive work. He's not as good as the guy wearing 19 in the white jersey tonight defensively. But he is a solid Major League All Star. I was surprised when I looked up the number. Tulowitzki this year, three errors. That's it. And shortstop at this stage of the season, you bet. Moved him off the plate, a ball and two strikes. For Gonzalez, in addition to his Power numbers. He's got 19 stolen bases, too. Pretty good lead at first. Oddly enough, their recent 10 game homestand, which they went 5 and 5. What cost them was a lack of offense. They weren't swinging the bats very well, but their pitching was pretty good at Coors Field during those 10 games. Yeah, they had that series with the Marlins where neither team could score at all. Mm -hmm. Out in Denver. Braves would like that to continue in this series, and that's a good way to keep them down. Tulowitzki chased and missed. And Beachy's first strikeout of the night is the second out of the inning. He's given up his first hit and his first run, and now he's got his first strikeout out of the way on a very good breaking ball down and away. Now to the task of pitching. And another all star in Michael Kadire. He's third in the league in hitting, eighth in RBIs. Strike one called. Goes 19 of 21 in stolen bases this year. Kadire behind in the count. And that just missed. One ball, one strike. The Rockies first start, first stop here on their uh, three city road trip, Atlanta, Pittsburgh, and New York. They are 10 and 11 against the National League East. Simmons at short will load up. And his throw to first is in time. Brandon Beachy, welcome back to the big leagues. Colorado scores a run on two first inning hits.
De La Rosa. And this lineup's been awfully potent for Atlanta. The Toyota starting nine features Jason Hayward in the leadoff spot. Justin Upton second. Freeman, Gaddis, Johnson third, fourth, and fifth. And Ugla, Anderson Simmons, Joey Tadoslovich in left. And Brandon Beachy, of course, hits ninth. And they'll go against Jorge De La Rosa, who is on fire. 32 years old, 6'1", 220 out of Nuevo Leon, Mexico. In his eighth year in the big leagues overall, but his last six starts on the road since May 1st, 3-1 and one with a 193 ERA. That's fifth lowest in the major leagues over that stretch. And his Ford keys to pitching success, thumbs up. He's got a bad left thumb, and it he hurt it again trying to bunt. And it's really been problematic his last five or six starts because after he hits by the third or fourth inning, it begins to bother him, and he hasn't been able to pitch deep into ball games. He has an outstanding split finger changeup that he can use to lefties and righties, and lefties, by the way, only hitting a buck 95 against him for the year. But he's running into a red hot Jason Hayward to start the Braves' first inning. So let's see what gives in this matchup tonight. Nine homers, 24 knocked in for Hayward. Two of those homers came against the Cardinals. He's also got a fastball that's in the low 90s, 91, 92. And an occasional curveball. And I say occasional because he doesn't throw it at home. He throws it on the road. And that little pause in the middle of his windup, is that enough to mess up your timing? You bet it is if that's what you buy into. Right there. And a strike, two balls and a strike you count now. Jason had a good series instrumental in that three game sweep for the Braves. Not the least of which was this long home run he hit last night. Braves go on to win four to two and for Jason his ninth home run. And he chased a breaking ball that was well off the plate. Hayward's down on strikes. One away in the Braves first inning. It's an interesting lineup when when Freddie put Hayward at the top of the order. He's used Upton batting second the last couple of nights. I mean it's like there are there is some serious thunder right at the top of the order that uh, can give you an instant lead if one of these guys connect. Who's batted third most of the year? He's batting in front of the man on deck. That's, of course, the red hot Freddie Freeman, our Delta Airlines on deck batter. Good numbers against Colorado. That stroke toward left. Cargo got a bad jump. One out single for Justin Upton, and here indeed comes the Thunder and Freddie Freeman. Justin had a good series against the Rockies on that frozen tundra. Of Coors Field back in April. He went five for 12, and even as cold as it was, he hit two homers on what was already a good April going for him. Yeah, just to put it in perspective, the last time we saw the Rockies, it was 60 degrees cold. So, Braves played the coldest game ever in the history of Coors Field back in April. But perfect weather in Atlanta tonight. Ball one for Freddie Freeman. That's a little low. Two balls, no strikes. It's been a long winding road for De La Rosa to get to and stay in the big leagues. 
Arizona signed him as a non-drafted free agent way back in 1998. Two years later, he pitched in the Mexican League. Then the Boston Red Sox got him. And then he's been in a couple of big trades. He was traded from Boston back to Arizona, part of the deal that brought Kurt Schilling. And then went from Arizona to Milwaukee in the deal that sent Richie Sexton to the desert. And he's recovering, has recovered from Tommy John surgery himself. Missed most of last year, only made three starts for Colorado late in the year. After having his elbow fixed. And he's come back strong this year, 10 and 5 with a 297 ERA. Found off Rosario back to the screen. Two balls, two strikes. Let's go back. Put on your parkas, folks. Lloyd Christmas was in attendance as the Braves and Rockies battled in 23 degree weather. Justin hitting with that hood on. And there's the Tom Hart snow town, snowman town. Freeman reaches out and strokes one to left, but Gonzalez gets there. His throw back to first will be late. And that is out number two. Colorado's had a pretty good run defensively this year. That's our Home Depot tools from the dugout. Mentioned good work by Tulowitzki at shortstop. Only three errors. But a rookie third baseman, Nolan Arenado. Boy, I hear some rave reviews about him today. Big guy there at third base, but excellent range left and right has a good arm. And being compared favorably to Chipper Jones on that slow roller up the third baseline and bare handing it. Evan Gaddis bats with a runner at first. And on cue, Arenado glides to his left and retires the side. No runs to hit a man left. One nothing Rockies. We head to the second. Ending. Now let's go to L.A. for a Fox Sports 1 game break. Thank you, Molly. That's a big series for the Cardinals and the Pirates. First of five head-to-head, -head, Joe, at PNC Park. Cardinals got to be reeling a little bit the way they got shut down offensively here in Atlanta. Great pitching by the Braves. And you know the Pirates were laying for him. And Pedro Alvarez off to a terrific 2013 campaign for Pittsburgh. They're only a game and a half behind St. Louis in the Central. So Beachy Joe got his first inning out of the way. He trails by a run. 
but has the six seven eight hitters for the Rockies in the second starting with Todd Helton. This guy has always hit the Braves well. A lifetime 331 batting average against the Braves staff. And when you think about the guys that he faced in the era in which he faced them, whether it was Coors Field or not, that's absolutely incredible. Pretty solid, isn't it? 94 games worth. All two strikes. I don't know if it's an open question or not, but is Todd Helton a Hall of Fame player for you? Well, first of all, 331 against the Braves, that's just a little bit higher in his career average of 320. So <laughs> if you want to get real carried away. Yeah, <laughs> good point. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Beachy got him down and away. Second strikeout for Brandon. One away. Injuries have cut into some of his numbers, Chip. I think he was on his way to maybe 3,000 career hits, but a bad back and some leg issues have really plagued him. Good off speed pitch there, down and away again by Brandon. Good touch, good feel already. So for me, yeah, he is. I, I think he is. I think I'm fairly or unfairly. There are those who are going to gauge Helton's career by the ballpark in which he played his home games in. Yeah, and I think that's unfair. But then I thought Craig Biggio was a, a lock to be a Hall of Famer. And why he wasn't voted in, I don't know. I don't know why Dale Murphy's not in the Hall of Fame. That bothers me. I thought it was supposed to be based on dominance within your era, you know, within your time that you played and those guys certainly dominated their stretch Dale with two MVPs back to back I'd say that's dominating yeah but I don't get a vote would you like well I mean we'll happily petition commissioner you can that would mean I'd have to be a writer <laughs> good point nothing wrong with writers I think you're saying you like your gig now, right? I'm happy. There you go. One ball, two strikes to the Colorado catcher. Some fine people over there. Some of them just don't know how to vote. Ooh, oh. just missed the corner. Another good change up. Beauty. Fox drags at it just off the plate, so a good call there by Jordan Baker. He of the Baker brothers. Now full count. Got to be careful with this kid. It's been said of Rosario, he has as much raw power as any hitter in this Colorado organization. Excellent fastball hitter, too. Right on that one, right back to the screen. The other question, I guess, for the Rockies, we've talked so much about what the Braves have done before the trading deadline, is Colorado in or out of the race out west? They begin play tonight six games behind the Dodgers in third out west. That's well hit to right. Upton on a dead sprint back to the fence, and that's going to carry out of here. Told you about Rosario's power. He hit one a mile to right, and the Rockies lead to nothing. Rosario's out of the Dominican Republic, 5'11, 220. Something that just kind of floated out of his hand. Another hanging breaking ball, I think. And uh, Rosario, last year, how many of you at home knew that he hit 28 homers for the Rockies, 71 RBIs, and hit 270? Oh, 
if they keep getting big hits like that they might be in this thing. Two zip. We're in the second. And our first look at Nolan Arenado. We did not see him in Denver. He's drafted as a catcher. Second round pick out of high school from California. And like a lot of rookies, he's had his ups and downs since he got called up, but has had him steadily improving numbers in the minor leagues. Just a kid, 22 years old. And now looks at a 2 2 count. Lives in Lake Forest, California. Sounds like an area with a lot of water and trees. You are right on top of your research. He's got a good hitting coach to work with too, Dante Bichette. He of the Blake Street Bombers, back in uniform with Colorado. And these guys grip it and rip it, and Arenado just did that. That's to the warning track in left. He's headed for second and will make it standing up. So after the strikeout, Rosario's homered. Arenado has doubled for the 17th time, and De La Rosa will try to help himself. Fastball up and in. Pretty good turn on the ball by Arenado on a 93 fastball. Now I'm told the glove that De La Rosa was going to wear tonight, he might be bunning here, but he was going to wear one of those protective plastic sleeves on his thumb. That one gets away from Gaddis and Arenado at third now. That might have been a cross up for the runner at second. But that Arenado also is going to wear like a motocross glove that had that was heavily padded. And you can see he's got that sleeve on his left hand, that hard plastic sleeve to try to protect his thumb. And I'm assuming that motocross glove has a lot of shock absorption in it somehow that might help keep his thumb from really hurting during the game. Infield in with one out. I try to buzz him inside, see if he wants to swing. Mm -hmm. Two balls and a strike. Kind of taking that top hand off the bat pretty fast, too, isn't he? Was tipped and caught by Gaddis and a big second out of the inning. It, it's not funny, but it's interesting. I mean, the, the Braves have Paul Mahalam, who they just had to put on the disabled list today, who whose injury was from hitting and not from pitching. And for De La Rosa, who's having a terrific year, he's battling through an injury that has nothing to do with his pitching. Never think about that. I had a guy tell me in the offseason, a pitcher in the big leagues right now, that 
be surprised how many pitchers once they get out of the game. Let's say a right handed hitter. How many guys have to have their left shoulder repaired because of the funny swings they take hmm. swinging the bat and how sometimes they reach and get overextended and damage their non throwing shoulder. One ball one strike. Fowler doubled and scored the first Colorado run. They'll try to bring home Nolan Arenado who stands at third after a double and a wild pitch. Fly ball well hit to left. And a grab made by Tudoslovich and that will retire the side. Willen Rosario hits a solo homer to right. The league's leading hitter Chris Johnson gets set to go for the Braves down to nothing in the second inning. Looks at Brandon Beachy tonight. And here is the league's leading hitter, Chris Johnson, the subject of tonight's Georgia Lottery, hitting the jackpot. Well, he's been hitting since spring training started, and he hasn't stopped. Great battle with Juan Francisco for the third base job that eventually became his own. Seven for 10 against the Cardinals, scored four runs, leads the National League in batting average, and 16 multi hit games over his last 38. Takes the ball outside to start the second inning. Johnson, Ugla, and Simmons for the Braves. And squibbed out to Todd Helton. That's off the heel of his glove. But De La Rosa does his job and gets to the bag in time. Chris is retired. 3 1 on the put out. One away. Got jammed real hard on that, and Todd Helton, like an easy play, turned it into a tough one. One away for Ugla. Stairs, one ball, no strikes. 21 homers for Dan, 49 RBIs. We're talking about that series in Pittsburgh that starts tonight with the Cardinals chip. It'll be in interesting to see what kind of attendance they have for midweek mm -hmm. games. Something tells me they're going to have a lot of people there. Pirates have waited a long, long time to have a good year. Five games with the Redbirds. Turnstiles ought to be humming. 
Tulowitzki off balance makes the play two outs. And here's Simmons. Anderson's really playing good baseball right now. Making all the plays defensively. Getting some key hits. He's really just in the Cardinal series alone improved on that hitting with runners in scoring position and two outs. Drove in some big runs in that series. Got a number for you that might surprise you here. Talking about the Pirates and Cardinals. Pittsburgh Pirates are next to last in attendance. Are they? Hmm. The Marlins have drawn 900,000. The Pirates 1.2 million. For a club that's a game and a half out of first. Popped up. And right in the middle of the diamond, Tulowitzki will gather it in, and it's three up, three down, and a scoreless Atlanta second. On a beautiful Monday night. Earlier today, the Braves were able to pick up a piece in the bullpen and a key piece in Scott Downs, a lefty. This afternoon, I asked general manager Frank Wren if he keeps his manager, Freddie Gonzalez, informed and if they go back and forth on trade candidates. Sometimes it's so preliminary. You don't want a lot of discussion out there. And I, I don't like even a lot of discussion, you know, within the organization because they're just so preliminary that uh, it can actually hurt the process. So I think I keep Freddie informed all the time when we're about to do something or we're making offers. Uh, as we go through the discussion process, it's, it's, it's always helpful because you don't want to acquire a guy that the manager doesn't see a, a good fit for. And guys, remember in Braves history, whether it's Ryan Dempster, Ken Griffey Jr., names have leaked out before. I haven't seen one national writer who had Scott Downs before this trade was announced. Me neither, Tom. And it was a good pickup. Scott Downs, a veteran, a guy who's been through the wars and good against lefties and righties. As some of the Brave scouts were telling me before the game, he's a guy who can pitch a full inning. He's not a guy that you bring in to get a lefty. And then you got to get him out of there. He's got enough good stuff and a good changeup that he can run away from right handers and stay in a full inning. And he's here tonight. DJ LeMayhew drives the ball to deep right. Upton goes back to the warning track and makes the grab a step shy of the fence. And LeMayhew 0 for 1 with a sacrifice tonight. He's the first out in the third inning. That'll bring up Carlos Gonzalez, our Ram Trucks power stats. First in homers, tied for first. First in slugging and extra base hits. First in total bases. And as we told you, sixth in RBIs. Nothing new for him. He's always near the top of the league in production. And hard to think of him as a guy who bounced around himself from a couple of teams. In the course of about two years, it was about three or four teams. Two. 
it's not pops away. Two balls, no strikes. Sorry, Chip. It's not unusual for a left fielder to lead the league in assists because typically a left fielder has your weakest arm and you've got a shorter throw to make to either second or third. But this guy's got a good arm in left field. To the right side, and that'll sneak through. Gonzalez has two hits. When you factor into how deeply you have to play at Coors Field, you might be throwing it from Colorado Springs right. and still has all those assists. Renee Latchman is first base coach, going through his stand up routine. <laughs> Is Dan Ugla all right? Jim Lovell out to check with him. Laying out for that ground ball and come up short. Bring his leg a little bit. Again, got to keep an eye on Gonzalez. Who is right, Joe? Undrafted free agent by Arizona, then went to Oakland in the deal for Dan Heron. Then was traded for Matt Holiday in 2008. He's running. He got a great jump. No chance for Gaddis. And Gonzalez has his 20th steal. He almost got a leaning start. He was leaning back and then rocked back towards second base, anticipating the move to the plate, and he guessed right. That so makes him a 2020 man. So scoring position chance for Troy Tulowitzki, who <laughs> struck out swinging his first time up. Walt Weiss, former Brave, in his first year as manager of the Rockies, has he, them in striking distance. He had a great line earlier this spring when asked about the difficulties of managing in the big leagues. He said, I don't know how tough it's going to be. In fact, it might be easier than coaching in high school because I don't have any parents calling me every day. <laughs> what a bonus. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Why is my kid not playing? You don't have to worry about that. Ball, two strikes. Kind of a trend, Joe, of guys in the big leagues who didn't have much, if any, managerial experience getting big league jobs. Mike Matheny of the Cardinals, Robin Ventura, twice. Yeah, it is, and all doing a good job, I think. I think uh, Robin Ventura last year, especially a good job, Cart of the White Sox, a little short handed talent wise this year. Yeah, but last year, Walt was. Coaching his son's high school team in Denver. Which is not a knock. That's a fact that, like you're saying, he just hasn't been coaching in the big leagues, hadn't been managing in the minor leagues, but he had been an assistant to the general manager for the Rockies, a former Rockies player. He knows what Coors Field's like, certainly. And yet took the job anyway. <laughs> We'll check back in in October and yeah. see how, how Walt's fair. You're right, he's got him within shouting distance of the division lead. There's six behind the Dodgers. And Tulo stays alive, still two balls, two strikes. Well, it's a good lineup. There are a lot of teams that love to have this kind of clout in their lineup no matter where they play. It's just a matter of somehow massaging your pitching staff in Colorado. And try not to overextend them, and they're still they've still got them on a pitch count. I'm glad Glavin isn't here to weigh in on that one again. <laughs> but um, they've they've upped it from like 75 pitches up to about 100. But rarely do their starters go over 100 pitches. Well, it didn't work last year. Rockies had a, a 64 win campaign last year, and their team ERA was almost six. That was the second worst ERA in the history of the Rockies. Was their 
20th season of existence. But Jim Tracy couldn't make it work in Denver. He resigned. And in the offseason, the Rockies offered the job to Walt Weiss. Three seasons with the Braves, hit over 250. Made the All Star team and made one of the great plays in Braves postseason history at the Astrodome to save the Braves bacon in one playoff series. Bases loaded, infield in, and a ground ball that he made an unbelievable diving stop, got to his feet, and threw out the runner at home plate. I believe Eddie Perez was the catcher that kept the Astros from winning that game. Ninth pitch at the at bat to Tulowitzki. Gonzalez second, one out. Colorado bats in the third. Now time call. Let me ask you this, Joe. Even though Weiss didn't have much managerial experience himself, he did play for Bobby Cox and he did play for Tony LaRusso. Some of those lessons had to rub off, wouldn't you think? I would think so, certainly. He's got a good staff around him too. Uh, Renee Latchman. I'll start with him. Who's got managerial experience too? Two lows. Fighting off those pitches that look too low. are hoping to get Beachy through six innings around 100 pitches. He's halfway to 100 now and he's got one out in the third inning. And to Lewitsky just took a free pass first and second one out. And Kadire's the batter. First walk issue issued by Brandon and the only ground ball out he has recorded tonight, other than a sacrifice bunt, was off the Batica diary. He could use that here. And Roger McDowell out for a quick visit and a breather after the long at bat with Tulowitzki. Your impression on Peachy's stuff now, his first time and a half through the batting order. Well, little, his breaking ball in the first inning, it looked like maybe a slider that uh, didn't do much. He was up in the first inning, and I think that was just an element of. Him trying to overthrow a little. He's got a pretty good curveball, but um, you know, he's not sharp. It's going to take a while, as we have we kind of suspected and talked about that when that day came when he did come back, he we just can't expect him to be the guy that was leading the league in ERA last year and pitching lights out. He, he, it takes a while to regroup. Love a ground ball off the bat of Kadire here. Michael, another terrific big league hitter. I used De La Rosa as an example last year when he came back from his Tommy John. He only made three starts at the end of the year, but he had the, this whole past off season to continue to work, build up arm strength, and he's come back this year uh, stronger than ever. Sometimes it's. It may be a 12 month recovery, but it, if you look at some numbers, it's more like an 18 month uh, term for guys to get back to where you think, okay, they're they're back to normal. Remember Tim Hudson too? Sure. At the end of the year when he got activated. Well, Kerry Wood talked about that when I was with the Cubs. He said, he said this. He called it the Tommy John breaking ball. It felt great coming out of his hand. It rolled off his fingers exactly the way he thought it should, and it felt great, but it was like a cement mixer. It just got whacked. All those little tiny muscle fibers, he said, just weren't firing the way that he was used to. But he said it did come back eventually. Sure. Well, it did for Tim, but it, it, it wasn't like Tim came back pitching lights out that last two months or whatever it was of the season when he first came back. But the next year he was lights out. He was good. He was his old self. One 
One ball, two strikes. Beachy and Gaddis have not worked together, so we've seen a couple of meetings already tonight. And it's a very important situation in the game with Colorado up 2 nothing. MLB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. It's available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Braves baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Braves.com for details. Fly ball well hit center. Hayward going back, still going back at the fence. Can't get it. It's off the wall. And Hayward bangs into the fence. A couple of runs are going to score. Kadire on his way to third with a triple. And the Rockies lead 4-0. Ball is really jumping tonight. That ball, I think, flew, fooled Jason a little bit, like a fastball that rode up and into him, and he hit it hard. He was running like he thought he hit it out. And it almost went out. So again, the infield in has to come in for the Braves with Todd Helton up. Two in, four nothing score, one out. And fouled at the plate. Strike one. Let's check in with Tom. Guys, just moments before first pitch, Evan Gaddis and Brandon Beachy were giving each other a crash course on the signs and Beachy's preference for pitches. Remember, when Evan Gaddis came up and was catching guys for the first time, there are at least pitchers that he saw during spring training. Doesn't have that opportunity to have caught Brandon Beachy before today. Away, no balls, two strikes. Since Tim Hudson's at home watching, and I know he'll appreciate me going through this, but I'm going to again use him as an example. In 2009, when he came back, he had thrown uh, 22, 23 innings in rehab, and then for the Braves, seven starts, two and one with a 361, gave up a bunch of hits. Per innings pitched, uh, 49 versus 42 innings pitched. But then the next year, his first full season back in 2010, he went 17 and 9 with a 283. That was Tim Hudson like. It's just arm strength and the recovery. You may feel right. Never had it done, so I didn't go through it. But you may feel 100%. You're certainly in phys great physical shape with all the work you put in. But the act of pitching to major league hitters in front of big crowds and big stadiums, it's a lot different than pitching in the minor leagues, going through your work, knowing that the results aren't what matters, it's how you feel that matters. Action has begun in the Braves' bullpen. That's David Carpenter. Elton and 0 2 count. He drives one to right. This one playable for Upton. Kadire will tag. Upton's throws headed home. And it's going to be late. It's sacrifice fly for Todd Hilton. The third run of the inning and the fifth in the game makes it 5 nothing, Colorado. And time for tonight's Firestone Complete Auto Care Extra Mile. Most innings scoring two or more runs. The Rockies lead the National League in that category now with 124 different innings of this type. The Braves in fourth place with 118. Single runs in the first and second for Colorado. Three here in the third. And they lead 5-0. Got a long way to go in this ball game, and hopefully there's not anybody at home thinking, "Well, there had to be a, an obvious letdown after that big sweep of the Cardinals." There has nothing to do with what's going on here so far. That's ripped foul out of play. One ball, two strikes.
We were told that uh, they have a packed house in Pittsburgh tonight, by the way, and that they led four to nothing in the first inning after ten pitches. Wow. Ten pitches? Uh-huh. How about that place is going crazy? You bet. Westbrook and Liriano pitchers in Pittsburgh tonight. Liriano is going for his 11th win for the Pirates. A big pickup for them. And a swing and a miss retires the side, but a second long inning for Brandon Beachy, who trails 5 0 in the third inning tonight. With 11 pitches in the first, 26 in the second, and 29 pitches in the third is due second in this inning. Time for our AT&T U-verse trivia question. Todd Helton's one of two current National Leaguers with over 2,000 career hits and over 350 career home runs. Can you name the other? We ought to get this, shouldn't I think, we? I think we just saw him. Beltran. Carlos Beltran is the guy that came to mind first. Hmm. No. Just questioning the home runs. I don't think he's got that many homers. It's a good thought. Joey Trudoslovich batting eighth and playing left field tonight gets things started. Beachy is in the on deck circle. He'll bat here. Against Jorge De La Rosa, who's been a road warrior for Colorado, and is gunning for his 11th win tonight. We're talking about um, Liriano for the Pirates, he started the season on the disabled list too. Bad shoulder. Yeah. Rumors swirling around the ballpark today that the Pirates may be thinking about adding Jonathan Papelbon because Grilly got hurt. But Grilly said today that with his forearm strain, he vows to be back in the bullpen and pitching before the season's over. Four to six weeks is the recovery time expected for him. And Tadasilovich golfs one over Arenado's glove. And Gonzalez in the corner scoops it up. But not in time to stop Joey T from doubling to start inning number three for Atlanta. Like a pretty good pitcher's pitch, too. Breaking ball. Well, he stayed up. But Joey stayed back, kept his hands back, and just got it out of the reach of Arenado. So a good start to the inning. Again, a long way to go. One 
Ball, no strikes. If you're swinging away, you like to hit the ball to the right side to get that runner over, but the way Helton is charging, Brandon may want to, if he continues to try and bunt, may want to try to bunt it to third. Todd Hilton is almost within handshaking distance by the time the ball gets to the plate. Here he comes again. Snap throw back to second. Good idea by Tadaslovich in safely. Two balls and a strike. Beautiful bunt. There's only one play, and it's the first at in time. Tadoslovich at third, one out, five nothing Colorado. Let's check in with LA for a Fox Sports One game break. Thank you, Molly. Mets try to snap a three game losing streak. That's in fourth place. Marlins dead last with 40 wins and some controversy in the Marlins camp yesterday. As Hayward, a big swing and a miss. Were you as surprised as I was about Tino Martinez? I knew Tino Martinez when he was a player in Seattle. That's a it's 180 degrees from everything I know about him and what a class act he is in terms of what was reported. He was fired as a hitting coach of the Marlins. Hayward, a line drive, gets the Braves on the board. He continues his hot hitting. And he scalded that ball. Pitched by a man who's real tough against left-hand hitters. 5-1 game. And now Justin Upton's the batter. Jason up to 25 RBIs. Left handers came in hitting only 195 against De La Rosa, but he left that fastball about belt high and out over the plate. And Jason did what he's been doing with mistakes. There's one run back for Beachy. Upton seven for 18 lifetime against De La Rosa, including a first inning hit tonight. And he was fooled, strike one. That looked like that split finger changeup. He can make it if he just turns his wrist a little bit. He can make it almost like a slider when it comes out of his hand, breaking down and into righties. And he follows that up with, as you said, pretty good fastball at yeah. 92. Balls, two strikes. Let's see if that was the same pitch. Yes, it was. Good location for it, throwing it below the knees and then have it just die in the dirt. Tough to pick up.
Patience, full count. And report on De La Rosa is that he, for a left hander, he doesn't hold runners that well. Maybe he doesn't worry about it because Rosario's so good. He's got such a good arm at throwing out some base stealers. Over 24 percent this year. Downstairs, a one out walk. Things getting interesting in Atlanta. First and second, one in, one out, and Freddie Freeman's the batter. De La Rosa's last start came against Miami. Six innings of five hit shutout ball, walked one, struck out five. Again, they're on a strict 100 pitch limit. It was the sixth scoreless start for him this year out of his first 21. That seems almost impossible with this club and their home park. A swing and a miss by Freeman. No balls and a strike. He hooks that ball into right field for a hit. Kadair charges. Hayward around third. He'll be stopped. And wisely so. The Braves have loaded the bases now with one out. And Evan Gaddis has a chance to tie the game with one swing. The good thing is the left-handers have done the work. The heavy lifting here. Two hits from lefties. And a walk to Upton. So now it's like Sikkim right-handers. You got Gaddis. Chris Johnson and Ugla coming up, then Simmons. So the lefties have set the table for him. Gat has bounced out to third to end the Braves first. Toward third. Aaron out of boots it. All hands are safe. It's 5 2. Seventh there on Aaron Otto. We've been bragging. We're bragging on the scouting report on him about his range. Well, that one was hit right to him. He didn't have to go anywhere, but he charged it and charged it enough to get a bad hop. What a break. Evan went after one of those split finger change ups and just kind of one handed it rolled over it. Be patient get a good pitch make this guy get the ball up. Base is loaded for the National League's top hitter Chris Johnson. And he went up there hacking foul back strike one. Johnson with a six game hitting streak working tonight. Coming off a seven for ten series at the plate against the Cardinals. I think 
when they tied Chris up a little bit on the first pitch. They thought they could come in there again and jam him. But it looked like this pitch was down. It was a little lower than the one before. And while it may have been in even off the plate, the fact that it was down enough for him to drop the barrel on it was the difference. So there's a right hander that does the job. Gaddis put it in play and got the error. Now another right hander has a chance to do some damage. Quick visit by Jim Wright, the Colorado pitching coach. And another right hand hitter is named Dan Ugler for the Braves. He bounced out to Tulowitzki his first time up. Showed you that graphic earlier. The Rockies with all those multi run innings. Well, the Braves answer with one themselves here in the third. Four runs are in. And up the middle, Tulowitzki gloves, throws off stride, and got him at first. But Gaddis scores to tie the game. Atlanta needed contact, got it. And Johnson at third with two outs. It's 5 5. Remember, Dan Ugla kind of banged his knee, it looked like, on that diving attempt earlier. I don't know if this slowed him down any at all. Tulowitzki with a spectacular throw off balance to get him. But he put it in play and got an RBI for his work. Like I said, a long way to go. A walk and an error have loomed large in the inning. Now Simmons will try to give the Braves the lead. He takes down and in. One ball, no strikes. Second, and the Braves lead 6 5. Good to go, you right handers. Everybody putting it in play and putting some good swings on the ball. Fastball right there, right down the middle, and boy, he didn't miss it. And you're right, Gonzalez turned to his left. That was the wrong way, but I'm not sure it would have helped him. Chip, that ball was sizzling over his head. So Andleton Simmons on this homestand with some big two out hits has just put the Braves in front. They will walk to Doslovich. And go after Brandon Beachy, who all of a sudden Joe leads the game 6 5. And a good move. I'm sure he went over to Freddie Gonzalez and said, Thanks for letting me hit. <laughs> yeah. Beachy, the 11th man to hit the inning. Walt Weiss has seen frames like this at home at Coors Field. Yeah. You wouldn't think they'd see many of them on the road. He's made mistakes though with the fastball. He made some good pitches. He got Upton to chase a couple of those split changes. But he really hasn't made a good pitch with it since, and he's made big mistakes with the fastball. You mentioned earlier the hand injury. Don't know if that's been a problem for him either. Don't know until after the game. But six are in for the Braves in the third inning. And Peachy pops one up. LeMayhew drifts out and is called off by Kadire. And the Rockies right fielder puts it away. How about that inning? The Braves score six times and take a one run lead to the fourth.
come to the plate. Six of them score. And Brandon Beachy now has a 6-5 lead. Delta Airlines, a proud sponsor of the Atlanta Braves as we start our four-game series against the Rockies tonight. Yeah, and while we're at it, check out Georgia Power there. Did you see that right there below Delta? Georgia Power tip number two. BJ, or excuse me, Justin Upton. No, I was right the first time. BJ is number two. Georgia Power customers can get 50 bucks and free removal of the second working refrigerator or freezer through the refrigerator recycling program. Visit georgiapower.com slash refrigerator. Talk to BJ before the game briefly. He had a good hard workout uh, before batting practice. Took taking a lot of swings and he's going out on a rehab Wednesday. He told good. Me. Good. And Jordan Schaefer starting to run and get into baseball activities. He told me his ankle feels good, but he said, man, I'm out of shape. <laughs> he was running wind sprints before the game and came in just gasping for air. He's been lifting weights, but can't run with a bad foot. He just doesn't understand how hard it is to stay in shape. That's just he? these young pups don't get it, do they? <laughs> No balls and a strike to Nolan Arenado, the Colorado third baseman. You know, he'd like to make up for his error, which was ruled an error. Fielder's choice in RBI, curiously. And he just did. A line drive down the left field line. A long home run ties the game. He's two for two. Well, because he just hit a homer to tie the game, we won't get into what a brutal scoring call that is, but he does atone for it. Number eight for the Colorado third baseman. And it looks like we're going to have a knockdown drag out Pier 6 brawl here tonight, Mr. Carey. We bat last. I like that. Mm -hmm. Here's De La Rosa. He struck out swinging. David Carpenter was up earlier for Atlanta last inning. He may be up firing away again. And indeed, he is. Has Scott Downs made it out there yet? I haven't seen. He's supposed to be here. He's supposed to be wearing number 32. Fly foul. And De La Rosa stays alive. 0 oh and 2. I mean, we've had 12 runs scored and 13 hits, and Sun's not even down yet. Not one to bring up the jinx thing, but I do remember someone very close to me asking, Have we used up our quota of two hour and 33 minute games for the year? <laughs> Sorry about Don't that. Don't want to name any names. <laughs> However long it takes tonight. There you go. And a swing and a miss. Beachy gets De La Rosa swinging. One in, one out. Now the top of the order in Dexter Fowler. This is a really nice kid, good player, and finally has settled in and is becoming the leadoff man the Rockies were hoping he'd be for the last couple of years. He was the subject of some trade rumors floating around in the offseason about coming to Atlanta. It's either Fowler or Charlie Blackman who played at Georgia Tech. Dexter hit 300 last year for the Rockies with 13 home runs. Got 12 homers already this year. And Simmons has to hurry. And hurry he does. What a play. I'm not even sure he got a real good grip on that ball. Saw a lot of white in his glove when he got it in the webbing. He certainly had enough of it. He was still fumbling a little bit for the grip, though. As he was getting ready to 
bring his arm back. Nice recovery. What arm strength. Yeah for Simmons. I mean. It's almost levitation. When he glides. And makes that peg to first. Quickly 0-2 to DJ LeMayhew. And that's foul back. The Cubs took LeMahieu in the second round of the draft back in 2009. Got to the big leagues in 2011 very quickly for Chicago. But with Darwin Barney blocking him at second, they moved him to Colorado along with Tyler Colvin. And last year, as their starting second baseman after the break, hit 297 overall for the Rockies. Out of LSU, I believe. Correct. Like I said, everybody just refers to him as a baseball player. That's a great compliment. Two balls, two strikes. Brandon's got five strikeouts, two of those with a pitcher. But there have been a couple of at bats where he's gotten ahead and he hadn't been quite able to put a guy away. He's had to work hard to put him away. And that's driven his pitch count up. You can see 81. Just missed inside. Maybe that's why he's having trouble putting him away. That's not Laser Baker behind the plate. Little in. Ripped into left. These guys swing the bats, boy. There's ill intent in that batter's box when the Rockies face you. And that's the ninth Colorado hit, I believe. Well, no disrespect to Brandon and his first start back. They've had some good pitches to hit, too. And again, they battled. He had, they forced him to throw extra pitches. They forced him to make a good pitch with a strike, and then they tee off. His last start was June 16th of last year. Brandon Beachy is back in the big leagues, and he'll leave the ball game tied 6 6.
Georgia Lottery, by the Home Depot, and by Toyota. Six six game, beautiful sunset at Turner Field in Atlanta. Brandon Beachy, I'm sure thrilled to be back in the big leagues, but Joe would be the first to tell you won't be happy with the end result tonight. And I'll bet more than anything the fact that his teammates caught up for him and then he gave up the lead real fast. That's probably eating at him as much as anything. But uh, better days ahead. He looked healthy. The ball was coming out of his hand just fine. The fastball was there. Better days ahead. And so David Carpenter answers the first AT&T call to the bullpen tonight. And he'll go after Carlos Gonzalez, who's two for two with a run and an RBI so far. David's kind of been the designated long man. Had a three inning stint on the 20th at Chicago, you might remember. With Beachy spot in the order, having made the last out last inning, he might get a chance to pitch a couple of innings, if not more. At first goes and Gonzalez fills the hole on the right side perfectly. LeMayhew a bit of a stumble around the second base bag. He and Simmons met at the bag, but no harm, no foul, and the Rockies have runners at the corners with two outs. I think he tripped him, and the third base umpire Marvin Hudson was pointing, indicating that if all else fails, there was interference here, obstruction. And so did the second base umpire Marty Foster. So if somehow LeMahieu had been thrown out at third base on a play, they would not have allowed it. So the nice play by Simmons to get Fowler's looming large now. Back to back singles off two different Braves pitchers allows Troy Tulowitzki to hit with Rockies at first and third. At first goes the Gaddis throw to second is going to be late, and the Rockies are running all over the place tonight. Tulowitzki took a strike, didn't like that call. Count 0 and 2, as Gonzalez has his second steal of the game. Thought Evan had a real shot at him there. His throw was a little high. If it had been down just a little bit, they they might have gotten Gonzalez. Nothing in two for Tulowitzki. And that one off the shoulder of Gaddis, and the throw to the plate will be late. A wild pitch brings home LeMayhew, and Colorado's back in front, 7 6. Gonzalez to third on the wild pitch as well. Boy, very little chance for. Evan there. I'm not even sure that got any of his chest protector. They got they have hit him to the side of the chest protector in the side in the ribs. So David's got to regroup now. One ball, two strikes. Two and two. Mentioned that Tulowitzki is one of the game's elite offensive shortstops. Just 47 games for the Rockies last year, but two years ago became the second shortstop in the league's history with a 30 homer, 100 RBI season.
The other. Ernie Banks who did that five times. And Tulowitzki's out number three. But Colorado scores a pair of runs and they're back in front. 7-6 in the fourth. Seven six Colorado as the Braves come up in the bottom of the fourth inning. They'll have the top of the order starting things off. That's Jason Hayward, who is tonight's SunTrust shining moment. He has really come on, hasn't he? And remember, he didn't even play in the series in Colorado. That was when he had his appendectomy. June and July, more Hayward like 275, seven homers, 17 RBIs, and now he's in the leadoff spot. So that on base percentage becomes vitally important. He's been on base once in two tries tonight. RBI single and a run scored back in the third. The left handed batters set up the pins, and the righties knocked them down for the Braves last inning when they scored six times. Oh, and two. Remember a couple of days ago when I said it looked like Jason was holding his hands lower. Mm -hmm. That that may be the case, but it's more like an optical illusion. He's actually trying to stand a little taller, which might make it look that way. Little roller, tough play, Arenado. Will it stay fair? Yes, it will. It dies in the grass. Infield hit for Hayward, and the tying runs aboard for Atlanta. Well, like any leadoff hitter, you know, you got to have those infield hits. Target way off the plate. And look at Rosario. He's shifting over to block that ball in the dirt. And Jason just pounded it into the dirt. Softened it nicely, though. Ned Mangan. Mangan's grass was perfectly manicured so to hold it. That was one of the old tools of the trade when teams would manicure their home field. Mm -hmm. Worked out for the Braves here to start the fourth. Upton's been on base twice. He singled, he's walked, he's scored. Had a Big cut, one ball, one strike. In the old days, too, though, there was almost as much dirt in fair territory as there was foul. Now it's commonplace for the grass to grow right up, you know, within a couple of inches, like you see here, of the foul line. There used to be another foot to 15 inches of dirt in fair territory. 
And then there was some serious manicuring with the rake in terms of tilting that dirt to make it roll one way or another. Terry Pendleton, when the Braves go on the road, he'll stand at home plate and roll balls down the line left and right to see which way they break. One ball, two strikes. That doesn't even begin to factor in the length of the infield grass. Wrigley Field, for example, thick, lush. Give their infielders more range. And how about Flip Feinberg? He had this today. It's not just Terry Pendleton who tests it, but one of the coaches for the Rockies who was checking to see which way the ball would roll on the grass and the dirt down the first baseline. Two and two to Upton. And back to the screen. And there are a million ways you can affect baseball. You can have if you have a sinker ball pitching club, you keep that dirt in front of home plate real soft. So if batter tops the ball, it just flattens out, and dies. Water down the area over near first base too for base stealers. Strike three, Upton called out on a late call. He said nary a word, but that face tells the story. One out. That wasn't well received by Rosario here. He kind of stabbed at it. See how he's trying to bring it back, and it was not a strike. That was a bad break for Justin. And everything about that looked looked poorly called both by the catcher catching it and the umpire. Raven looks high and tight. Another odd catch by the catcher. One ball, no strikes. Freddie pulled a single through the right side in the third inning. That's close to a balk. I mean, I guess he paused, but it looked like almost like he came into his stretch and just bounced and went to the plate. Bounced with his hands. You're right. I mean, there's there's no noticeable stop at all. That one was much better than the one before. Two and two. De La Rosa pitching well recently on the road. How about his last seven overall? A 196 ERA and averaging six innings a start. Only once this year has he given up six runs in a start. That was way back on April 30th at Los Angeles. The entire month of May, he gave up seven runs. He went 4 0 in May. And he just struck out Freeman. He's gotten a couple of strikeouts on that exact pitch. Hayward once, this time it's Freddie Freeman. 
That's the second out of the inning, third strikeout. Evan Gaddis has been aggressive early in the count. That split finger changeup thing that he throws is what Gaddis has put in play twice. on a fielder's choice E5 and picked up an RBI an inning ago. So even 40 runs batted in. Hayward's running and he got a great jump. Gaddis pops it up a mile high behind first. Long run Kadire near the line and it's Todd Helton over the shoulder. Making the beautiful catch in foul ground to retire the side. Tough play made by Todd Hilton, and that helps preserve a one run Rocky lead. the runs numbers we've got 13 of them scored as we move to inning number five at home since when did the Braves play their home games at Coors Field yeah that's the way it feels one of those games in the um, doubleheader the Braves won it 10 to 1 I think it was the second game of that doubleheader in 23 degree weather so the Braves didn't mind the cold weather the Rockies did tonight a nice warm day and everybody's cutting it loose So we talked at the start of this homestand that the Braves would see four of the top five hitters in the National League. Well, here's another one of them. Michael Kadire, third overall up to the minute. Look at the lead for Chris Johnson now. There was another guy on that list, and that was uh, Carpenter when that series started with Atlanta. He's dropped out of the top five. Votto moved in. All right, David Carpenter needs to. Fire a couple of zeros up there on the board and give the offense a chance to climb back on top. Well, that's line foul. It's nothing in two. Every team offensively loves to go to Coors Field and play. The Rockies, however, Historically, have hated coming to Atlanta. This has not been a friendly place for Colorado to play. They're 25 and 56 all time in Atlanta. And they've lost eight of their last nine here. Just 
missed two balls two strikes and that's something they're going to have to fix. The Rockies nine games under 500 on the road if they're going to make a, a roll on Arizona and the Dodgers. They need a good road trip. And Pittsburgh and New York next. And a roller foul Kadir still alive. There's a good start. A swing and a miss retires Kadire. One away in the Colorado fifth. All year long, Braves baseball on Sports South is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. Joe Simpson, Tom Hartship carry with you from Turner Field. Game one of our four games set with the Rockies. It's been a wild one. 7 6. David really got on top of that fastball and threw it right by him. Ball off the bat of Todd Helton, strike one. Last inning when Helton made that catch down the foul line, the amazing part was that he was running toward the Braves bullpen almost. When, I mean, not quite that drastic, but he was going in the wrong direction when that play started, and he still recovered and made the catch. Playing in, holding the runner on. See the angle he's taking here toward the pin, and then where is it? What a recovery! That's a part of his game that maybe isn't talked about enough, too. Got a glove, good glove guy. Todd Helton has been and offensively 18th on the all-time doubles list. 76th on the all time home run list, tied with Joe DiMaggio. And in the top 100 in hits all time. And, and a 320 career average. That's Hall of Fame stuff. Fly ball, shallow left, Johnson and Simmons. It'll be Andleton. And that's the second out. He touched on it earlier with Helton. It's not like he signed with the Rockies as a free agent and went there to pad his offensive numbers. He's been a born and bred Colorado player. It's a great park to hit him, but you still got to hit it. And Todd couldn't do so successfully for the second out. Here's Rosario. He homered to lead, or I should say, with one out in the second inning. His 15th of the year. Rank one. Phillies and Nationals are idle tonight. The Braves begin play eight and a half games in front of Washington, 11 games in front of the Phillies, have lost eight in a row. I heard some talk today. Driving in that uh, the Phillies may be talking to Chase Utley about an extension to keep him. And I don't blame him. I understand that. I'm not sure that everybody else isn't on the block, though. Swing and a miss. And there's that first zero we were calling for. Carpenter. Strikes out two men in the top of the fifth inning. Chris Johnson leads off for Atlanta down a run.
for their turn in the fifth inning. And it'll start with Chris Johnson. That means it's time for our Zaxby's indescribably good play. Boy, did he get his hands in to get this pitch and turn on it into the left field corner to plate two in the Braves' six run third inning. Chris one for two, and those two RBIs give him 36. Johnson Ugla and Andrelton Simmons in a one run game. Say that leg kick got the best of De La Rosa there. Kind of did a little double hitch on it. One, two. And about a 49 footer. Line base hit Johnson another safety tonight. That's 17 multi hit games in his last 39 I believe. I'll check for you. He's a machine right now. Get them while they're hot. In his last 60 games Chris Johnson has gone without a hit in back to back games once. In the last how many 60. Wow. Taking back to mid May. And his 33rd multi hit game came tonight. He represents the dying run. And Rosario, a nice block. One ball, no strikes for Dan Ugla. What did you call this game earlier? A knockdown drag out beer six brawl. Can you do it in Gordon Soli's voice? <laughs> no, and I wish I could. <laughs> Tony Schiavone good. There you go. Sharply hit and that's a fair ball headed for the left field corner. Johnson around second on his way to third. Cargo digs it out of the corner. Chris getting waved. The throw toward the plate is off target. Throw back to second. Laid and we're tied at seven. Dan got robbed back in the third inning when Tulowitzki made that terrific play on him. Oh, that was a change up that just floated up there, and Dan ripped it and kept it fair. But I want to I want you to watch this throw from the corner, 335 feet away from Cargo. Now it was offline, but that was a heave by a left hand or by a left fielder. 51 RBIs for Ugla. We're tied at seven. Here's Simmons. He has an RBI double. And he tries to bunt. And that's foul for a strike. I can't remember a game where there have been so many pitches up in the strike zone as we've seen in the first five innings of this one. And that have been ripped and not yeah. fouled off. <laughs> right. That's foul. It's nothing in two. Manny Corpus loosening up. Seven runs, nine hits for the Braves. That's the first time they've had any activity in their pen. It's the most runs De La Rosa has given up all year. Again, you can understand it if this game was in Colorado. Mm -hmm. 
So lots of games like this. But not often in Atlanta. No balls, two strikes. And a ball in the dirt. And Rosario, another good stop. This guy's throwing so many balls in the dirt tonight. Be wise for Dan to kind of employ that that lead where you're kind of bouncing off in the first instinct you have that the ball might be down in the dirt. Get moving. Did he go? He did not. It's two and two. One of the toughest to strike out in the major leagues. One in his last 19 games. Up the middle, Tulowitzki behind the second base bag throws to first and just in time. The bat split in half, and on a bang bang play, Simmons is out at first, but it's productive out. Dan Uglis at third base with one out. Yeah, he did his job after being behind 0 and 2. Good call by Tim McClellan. And a good job by Andrelton. That's something else I think that's really gone underreported about this club in the month of July. This team has struck out, but their strikeouts are considerably down from the first six, seven weeks of the season. And add to that a drastic improvement chip in situational hitting mm -hmm. moving runners over getting the job done that way. Adds up to uh, a much different type of offense for this club and with the lineup the way it is right now different looking lineup too, the way it's constructed. I really like the way you put it about three weeks ago. All these guys have the potential to hit home runs. But sometimes they need to go to the plate as a hitter not a slugger. It's been the case. The Braves haven't hit a home run, but have scored seven times. And make it eight as Tordoslovich goes the other way. Under the glove of Todd Helton, who is in on the grass. And the Braves are back in front. I really like Turdo. Like him a lot. Both sides of the plate. Left-handed, he's been chasing a few ball, bad balls down and in. But last night, a big hit to drive in a run. And now he didn't try to do too much with this with the infield in. Little inside out stroke on a ball down and out over the plate. Good piece of hitting by the kid. Six runs for the Braves in the third two here in the fifth and an eight seven Atlanta game. And David Carpenter. He's over for two this year. Chance to help himself. See if he can be one for one in bunts. Got a piece of Rosario. He hit his mask and he was still checking his lip like he got the Mask mashed his lip a little bit against his teeth. Give you some idea about the force of those foul tips, even with all that padding, which I'm sure catch, catchers would tell you it's not that much padding. Never enough, is Never there? Enough. Yeah. Wouldn't be for me. Nothing in one for Carpenter. 
And he gets the bunt down, and Rosario's going to take the out. That boy had some backspin on it. Yeah, he had to. He was he hesitated for just a second, thinking it might, with all with all that spin, might spin back foul. But he couldn't take that chance. Right here, waiting, but wasn't moving enough for him, and he had to get the out. So way to go, David Carpenter. Has two hits against the left-hander De La Rosa. Spots do second when the Rockies hit in sixth inning. Let's see if he continues. Let's see if Hayward can extend the lead. Well, nice strike, 0 and 1. What a stop. <laughs> uh, folks, these aren't bouncing like even within a foot of home plate. Look how far in front of the third baseline that one bounced. Somehow he corralled it. Now, yeah, calm down, please. <laughs> <laughs> In the air to left. Gonzalez got a running start, gets there, and that'll retire the side. Seesaw fair continues in Atlanta. The Braves are up now, 8-7. We continue on with the Rockies coming up. Let's head back to LA for a Fox Sports 1 game break. Thanks, Molly. Thanks for all the updates around the big leagues tonight. Look forward to those. As we continue on the rest of this 2013 season. With Joe Simpson and Tom Hart Elizabeth Morrow here as well. I'm Chip Carey back at Turner Field. Nolan Arenado gets set for the Rockies. He's gone deep tonight. Off Brandon Beachy. Something up and in her third and it was his eighth homer of the year. David sent down four straight after surrendering a single to Carlos Gonzalez in the fourth inning. The game started tonight by Brandon Beachy. Three and two thirds innings, eight hits, seven runs. His first start since June 16th of last year. As he's back in the big leagues after 
Tommy John surgery. Late swing. And Arenado an even count. Two balls and a strike. And now, two and two. Very comfortable night. 83 degrees at first pitch. Gentle breeze blowing across the diamond from the left field corner toward right. What do you say? 27, 28,000 tonight? Yes. To second. And Uglas got that. And a peg first in time for out number one. Fans enjoy five of Atlanta's best attractions when you purchase a Braves MVP pack for just $109. You'll get a ticket to the Braves game, Six Flags, the World of Coca Cola, Stone Mountain Park, and my favorite, the Georgia Aquarium. Order one today and save over $60. Visit Braves.com slash MVP. That's a good kind of end of the summer before school starts package right there. Right. You hit all the parks. I know they have the beluga whales at the aquarium. Can't remember if they have manatees there or not. Kind of cool animals to look at. As Corey Dickerson gets into the batter's box for the Rockies with one out. And a liner foul. Steve Reich one. From Macomb, Mississippi. There was nothing else for this kid to prove at Triple A. He hit 371 in the Pacific Coast League, had 14 triples, an on base percentage of 41%. How many triples? 14, it said. He's two for eight as a pinch hitter for the Rockies this year. He's going to be two for nine if Carpenter handles cleanly. And he did, and he is two outs. David's doing good work out of the pen tonight. Two outs and back to the top and Dexter Fowler. Cut has Dexter behind strike one. It's got to be a frustrating night for the Rockies and De La Rosa, who had a big lead tonight. He led 5 0, couldn't hold it. And Dexter behind 0 2 now. And the nice thing for Brandon Beachy is the fact that while he had uh, a couple of rough innings, he got this first one under his belt, and his team has regained the lead, so he is off the hook for any loss. And they've covered the, all those runs up. His next start should come in Philadelphia. Swing and a miss. Carpenter. 
has been brilliant in relief. Two and a third scoreless, and he enjoys an 8-7 lead. Here at Turner Field all season long, Braves baseball on Sports South is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. This is game one of the series. Game two follows tomorrow night. Here are your Chevron probable starters for game two. Alex Wood back out there looking for his first win tomorrow night against Juan Nicasio, six and four with a 248 batting average against him. Alex Wood has pitched pretty well. He's just had some funny things, kind of weird things happen in a couple of innings that have cost him big innings. Hopefully tomorrow that'll be different. And another veteran of Tommy John surgery is on to pitch for Colorado. It's right-hander Manny Corpus. Missed all of 2011 after undergoing Tommy John surgery in September of 2010. And he's been Another long guy used by the Rockies. Two innings or more in each of his last six appearances. Goes hard. Good slider. Started the year at AAA in Colorado Springs was two and three, but a five ERA there. The numbers at Colorado Springs very much like that at Coors Field. Somewhat inflated for the pitchers. And a tough inning ahead. Two, three, four hitters for the Braves are due. Justin Upton to start it off. Upton two for seven lifetime against Corpus in his career. One walk, one strikeout as well. And it's even. One ball, one strike. That's foul pass third. We'll do it again. Two balls, two strikes. They're having some fun in Pittsburgh. Pirates are all over the Cardinals. That's 9 1 Pittsburgh. In the eighth inning at PNC Park. Doubleheader tomorrow. Dave Baker tells us the Cardinals have four hits in that game. As Upton's caught looking, he's struck out the second straight at bat. And one away in the sixth inning for the Braves. Good start for Corpus. 
Here's Freeman. I think it was late in the last road trip we were talking about the the records of the teams in the National League East since June 1st or June 15th, mm -hmm. something like that. And Miami had the best record, and they continue to play well. They gave Colorado fits. They gave Pittsburgh a problem last uh, the last weekend in Miami. They've now won 40 games, and while they're a distant fifth, they're actually playing better baseball right now than a bunch of the other teams in the National League East. And that I think is a big story to follow over the final two months as upset and justifiably so as their fan base was with the way that they dumped their payroll. Will fans buy into the young players that had nothing to do with any of those decisions and those young players who are going to be instrumental in the Marlins future in their new ballpark. Galich, Marisnik, Logan Morrison, Giancarlo Stanton, Fernandez. I mean, there's some talent on that club. It's going to take a while. And Freeman is caught looking. A three pitch at that. Sits him down. Two up, two away in the sixth inning. Was it a strike? Target was off the plate. Shaved the line. Gavin Gaddis bats with the bases empty. Helton made a fine play to retire him in foul ground back in the fourth. Good slider. He's had a couple of made a couple of good pitches with it to both Justin and now to Gaddis. Everybody was. Walking to the right. Everybody thought it was a strike except the man with the final vote. I mean, everybody on the infield. Virtually the same pitch in terms of closeness is what he called out Freeman on. He just struck out the side. Very impressive inning for Manny Corpus. Seventh inning rolls around. 8 7. Braves lead the Rockies.
sixth inning. Time for our Academy Sports and Outdoor Leaderboard. With the way this game has gone, 15 runs, 19 hits. It's going to be on the bullpen one way or the other, either the Braves or the Rockies bullpen, to take care of business the rest of the way. And you like the Braves' chances given this comparison with the Braves' bullpen being so good all year long. And the Rockies bullpen down near the bottom of the National League in a lot of different categories, including opponents average next to next to last. And with that, the Braves will make a change going to the seventh. And that change is Luis Ayala. He's on for the 12th time. Four straight scoreless outings for Luis, covering three innings. He's picked up a hold and a win in that stretch. Let me take that back. That's incorrect. Three straight scoreless appearances for Luis Ayala, covering two and two thirds innings. Looking at Avila, not Ayala, my mistake. But he's got a chance to hold him right here. He's got to go through LeMayhew, Gonzalez, and Tulowitzki with the Braves up 8 7 in a wild game tonight. Rockies led 5 0. Braves took a 6 5 lead after three. Colorado came right back with two in the fourth. Atlanta answered with two in the fifth, and that's where we stand in this, the first game started by Brandon Beachy this year. So LeMayhew goes to work first. He's flat out, he's singled, he's scored, and he's laid down a sacrifice. Edge, even count. One of the questions about LeMahieu has been the fact that he's 6'4, 205, but he doesn't hit any homers. He's hit one this year. Certainly at Coors Field, you think you'd run into a few there. But he's not that kind of hitter, never has been. He hit seven total home runs in the minor leagues in 284 games. Last year with Colorado, he hit two. In 229 at bats. How about on base? Walks and the like. 332 on base for Colorado last year. Too short. Big hop for Simmons. And LeMay Hughes out number one. 353 on base in the minor leagues. So you think hitting behind Fowler and in front of Gonzalez, he'll be a terrific table setter, a guy that could score a lot of mm -hmm. runs if he can just get on. And he's done that once tonight. Always good to get the leadoff man. Ayala does that. Here's Gonzalez. The Braves haven't retired him yet. He's three for three. He scored and he's knocked in a run. And we understand the newest Brave has arrived. And loosening up, Scott Downs. Check out that ERA. Sinker, slider, change up, 37 years old. Time flies. We were together with the Cubs in 1998, I think it was. Is that right? He was a rookie that year, it was traded for Rondell White. I believe it was 98. Don't have his bio in front of me, but. Early stages of his big league career, he was a starting pitcher, kind of like Alex Wood. But he's made a great living for himself as a major league relief pitcher with Toronto, with the Angels, and others. And you showed the great bullpen numbers the Braves have put up without Venters and without O'Flaherty. What a nice luxury it is to be able to go and add to your bullpen and get a guy as accomplished as Downs yeah. to add to a bullpen that, frankly, hasn't needed an awful lot more help. Right, and a guy who has good command, who knows knows how things work. 
veteran experience. And another left hander. To complement. Luis Avilan. An extra lefty will be mighty valuable. A liner over third. Carlos Gonzalez is four for four tonight. Oh. Almost got it. Then he wanted a little hang time there too. So that ball wouldn't hit quite as hard as he thought it was, but Gonzalez's night. Four hits, two stolen bases. His third four hit game of the year. He has one five hit game this year. That came in May against the Cubs. So he represents the tying run, and here's Tulowitzki. And he drops a bunt down foul, strike one. Wow. Thank you. Kind of wish that had stayed fair. Guy with 19 homers and in the seventh inning representing the go ahead run, dropping a, trying to drop a bunt down. That's okay. He had a huge homestand for Colorado. Three homers, seven RBIs, seven runs, and 13 hits in the 10 games at Coors. As we mentioned, he missed 25 games this season with injury, but hit 332 at the All Star break. That's the highest batting average he's ever had going into the All Star game as a big leaguer. He has 19 go ahead RBIs for the Rockies this year. 11 of them have been on the road. So he's a guy that. Very consistent with his offensive damage home road doesn't matter. He's an elite player. Pretty good fastball there from Luis. He humped up to 91. That's about the top end for him. Fly ball well hit right up and going back and at the edge of the track is there to make the grab Tulowitzki just missed. He's out number two. Get your friends together to catch a game at Turner Field with the Coors Light six pack get up to six tickets in either the upper box or outfield pavilion for as low as twenty dollars a ticket a Coors Light six pack t-shirt and ten dollars of added value on each ticket visit Braves.com slash six pack for details today. Could Ayers one for three with a triple a run and two RBIs. Runner at first goes the throw by Gaddis is right on the money and in time. Same good catch and releases before but this one was right on the money. Gonzalez is four for four at the plate, but two for three on the base pads. He's out number three, and we head to the stretch with the Braves up a run.
you like offense, you have liked game one between the Braves and the Rockies tonight. The clubs have combined for 15 runs and 20 hits. League's leading hitter Chris Johnson has had a big night. A couple of hits, a couple of runs, and a couple of RBIs. And partner, the Braves try to stay unbeaten on the homestand. They lead late. It's an 8-7 score. Well, it was just a great throw by Evan Gaddis. Didn't hurry himself and just put it right on the bag. And they slide in right into the tag. You know how good that was. So and what's keep. more, that makes Kadire the leadoff man next inning. Let's get some insurance. Who better than Chris Johnson to start it off? He is some kind of hot at the plate. His average now 341. He's added three points with his two hits tonight. It's been a tough pitch to pick up for the right handed hitter so far. Two and two. He's throwing it. I mean, it's it's got a tilt like a slider, but it, he's throwing it kind of a curveball speed. And I think both the break and the speed is, are what are really giving the right-handers trouble. Everybody's out in front on it. All to the right side. Chris still alive with a full count. Chris to swing and miss. And Corpus has been perfect. Four hitters faced four strikeouts. Yeah, that's so just far. that's just good pitch. Secret weapon. Well, Corpus says. Had good stuff. He just hasn't been able to stay healthy. He's had bone spurs. He's had a right elbow strain. We mentioned the Tommy John surgery. Last year he pitched with the Cubs, was winless in 48 games in Chicago. And was declared a free agent after the season. And the Rockies signed him to a minor league deal in January. And he's looked awfully good tonight. And I'm sure the Rockies were counting on him bouncing back in his first full year back from Tommy John and having that good success because he had a great arm before he blew out. And he can do that as well. One ball, two strikes. 
Well, in their 2007 season, when the Rockies went to the World Series, Corpus saved 19 games for them that year. One four, lost two, had a 2.08 ERA. Roller out short. Tulowitzki's got it, and the throw in time. Out number two. Bases empty in the Atlanta seventh. Braves up eight seven. Let's go back to LA for a Fox Sports One game break. Thank you very much. I wonder if Molly's heard about your show and you know the progress they're making on finding that time slot for you. Well let's see it's 651 in L.A. I bet you Ed Gorin's still at the office. She could probably go. Talk to Ed or David Hill in between game breaks. There aren't that many games going on in the big leagues tonight. So Molly yeah any help you can give yeah. us would be fine. We'd like like uh, to pitch a, a show Molly. Chip and dips. <laughs> Various sports personalities and their hobbies hosted by Mr. Chip Carey. One ball, one ball, no strikes. You know, I know the promo for Fox Sports One, it'll be coming in mid August. When we say all the shows you want, I'm not sure that's what they had in mind. Well, it will be. You think so? Mm hmm. I'm confident. Some people, I mean, there might be some guys, ball players that like to do stand up comedy. Mm. Yes, Dave, you would be a dip. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, two strikes. That would be a has been a dip <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> Ball two strikes as we approach 10 o'clock. This will be a good test. We got Corpus striking out everybody in the ballpark, facing a man that hasn't struck out since the All Star game. That was really a good at bat he had when he got the runner over last time up. Two strikes. Deep short and through for Simmons. He's got two hits. Long throw is cut off. <laughs> he tried to. He tried to deep Gonzalez. <laughs> Sneaks this one through between short and third. He made a big turn. He knows Gonzalez has a big arm. Watch him. I'm not going anywhere. No, maybe. <laughs> he was hoping for maybe a little lazy throw from Gonzalez. Didn't get it. Very quietly, this young man in the batter's box has impressed. Look at his batting average. Yeah, I like him. I like him. He both sides. Something Freddie was talking with us about on the last road trip. The versatility Trudoslovich can give you. Switch hits quite obviously. That's two players in one. But he can play both corners in the outfield. Could play first base. Could catch in an emergency. And if you had to put him at third, he could probably do okay there for short stints. And a comebacker will end his at bat in the bottom of the seventh inning. We go to the eighth. It's getting late. Atlanta leads 8-7.
entertaining offensive game. 8 7 Atlanta leads it as we head to the eighth inning. The exciting part of the night was Brandon Beachy's first start back from Tommy John surgery. Yeah, here's some good Brandon. Good pitches, some good movement, good breaking ball, good sinker there, and then some that weren't so good, some pitches that were up. And he paid for just about every one of them. Didn't get away with anything that was left up in the zone. Three and two thirds innings. Gave up seven runs, walked one, but he did strike out five. Gave up a couple of home runs, but again, I go to the fact that the Braves are winning this game eight to seven. So the difficulties he might have had tonight, he can put those aside. He's got his first start under his belt, and onward to better days next start. Changes for the Braves. Jose Constanza is in the game to play left. He'll bat ninth. Luis Avilan to pitch. He'll bat eighth. And he'll face Kadir, Helton, and Rosario in a one run Braves game. Remember, Kadir was in the batter's box when Cargo was thrown out trying to steal second to end the Rocky seventh. Third straight day for Luis. Last two games of the Cardinals series. One inning each, no hits or runs. And three strikeouts total. What might be interesting too is the availability of Craig Kimbrell if this stays mm -hmm. a one run game. He pitched three games in a row against the Cardinals. That's true. But I you know what the acquisition of Downs also does is Gives Luis a break. I mean, he and uh, and Downs will be able to kind of alternate. To the right side, Freeman's got that, and Kadir's out number one. And maybe there are nights where you got to use them both, but if uh, if one's been working a lot, then you've got an extra guy, an extra left-hander to alternate if you need be. If you can't close with Kimbrel because you want to give him the net off, Jordan Walden has closing experience. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine if the lineup card suggested it, you could probably use down and downs in that spot too, if you sure. had to. So more options for the manager. That's always a good thing. Here's Helton. Todd's over two with an RBI. And a base hit the other way on the first pitch. I don't know what his career average is against lefties. It'd be easy to, for us to find out, but it's got to be high. It may not be 320 like his overall career numbers, but he's always hit lefties well. So, folks, if you haven't made your plans and you want to come out and see one of the game's great players, right at 300 for lefties. Don't know if this is Todd's last year. He's kind of hinted that it might be. Be your last chance to see him in the southeast. Of course, Todd was a great athlete at Tennessee. And William Rosario goes the other way. And Colorado threatens now with first and second and one out. Bottom part of the order is up. That's Nolan Arenado. See if Luis can get a ground ball here. Eighty two games for Arenado. He leads their club in double plays. He's hit a ten of them. Eleven would be nice. Anthony Barbaro begins to loosen up for Atlanta. Pitch on the homestand. 10 o'clock, one run Braves game. We're in the eighth. Rockies threatening, two on, one out. And low, 1 0. Bigger crowd than I thought tonight 31,218. Game one of the series. 
Got a first place ball club just coming off a weekend sweep of the team with the best record in the National League. Fans are excited. That was a pretty good pitch. He was able to lay off that was low. Now it's three and zero. Oh. Weiss turn him loose. We got a pinch hitter on deck in the pitcher spot, Charlie Culbertson. Culberson. I don't think they might let him hack. This is a place though with Louise's good change up where a young hitter gets impatient. Might do you a favor chasing that change up. Deep short. Simmons to Uglo one. Throw to first double play. It was a fastball, but it was well located down and away, and he tried to pull it. Eleven double plays by Arenado and none bigger for Avila. Eight seven Atlanta. Wow, how about the double play turned by Simmons, Ugla, and Freeman? That protects the one run lead for Atlanta as the Braves come up for the bottom of the eighth inning. Let's go back to our ATT Uber's trivia question tonight. Todd Helton's one of two current National League players with 2,000 career plus hits and 350 plus career homers. Can you name the other player with those numbers? I'm going to ride your coattails. Beltron? Yeah. Guessing Carlos Beltran, it's only a guess. Thanks for the ride. 353, just over the mark. So Jose Costanza faces a pitcher with maybe the best name for a pitcher ever. Outman. Josh Outman. But I gotta ask you. What are those funny things on his calves? Chip, my boy, those are called <laughs> stirrup socks. <laughs> 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 
Too bad he doesn't have some spats on. <laughs> Like it. Yeah, it's some old school there. I didn't realize this until you mentioned it. It was two years ago. There's a right way and a wrong way to wear those. Yeah, there's a front and a back. You didn't know that? <laughs> no. Yeah. Low side goes in the front, the high cut goes in the back. Don't feel bad. There's a lot of guys that wore them that didn't know that, too. <laughs> <laughs> We're good company, huh? Yeah. So, uh, Dave just brought up what I was going to say. They, they make you look fast. Oh, yeah. Don't no they? question. Yeah. If we could get Reed Johnson to break out a pair of high stirrups like that with his white shoe strings and white markings on his shoes, he already looks fast. Hope Reed's all right. Well, he didn't look good last night when he left the game after legging that out and apparently strained a Achilles and I don't know what else. So a total night off for him. And the Braves will evaluate him day to day, we understand. Can't afford to lose him, not the way he's going. Then she's already been battered enough. Yeah. Pena and Schaefer. And it's missed time. Reed now hurting. And somehow this club's found a way. And they're winning again tonight. Jose's having a little bit of a hard time keeping his back pockets in there against Mr. Outman. To the left side, Arenado scoops and a close play and in time. Well, that was close thanks to the hustle of Jose. That's the way you run through the bag. You lean, lean your head forward like you're running through the tape on a sprint and track. Not the lunge, not the Last step, jump and lunge that slows you down. That's why Jose was able to make that look close. And it was close, but made it look like he beat it out. So Outman versus Hayward. Jason again batting leadoff tonight. Two more hits, a run and an RBI. He's up to 228 for the year. You commented earlier, and I agree with you. I, I like the way this lineup is flowing right now. With Hayward first, Upton second, and Freeman hitting third. Well, Jason's always had a pretty good on base percentage. Even at his lowest points, he would draw his walks and get on base. Simmons putting the ball in play down in the order, hitting seventh. Jaroslavich hitting eighth tonight, was on base three times with a couple of hits. That is a real buzzsaw if you think about it. Upton, Freeman, Gaddis, Johnson, Uglas, Simmons. As Jason's down on strikes, that's out number two. Hop on the bus, Braves fans. Travel to the game in style. The Fox Sports South Fan Express is a custom luxury coach specially created for group travel to and from Turner Field. So if your group wants the VIP travel treatment, log on to foxsportsouth.com for more information. Outman is outman. Did his job, though. Got the two lefties. Justin Upton will be the Braves hitter as Walt Weiss will go out and grab the baseball. High stirrups man looked awfully good. Number 88, two thirds of a scoreless inning. 8 7 Atlanta. The inning continues in a moment.
to you in part by Ram Trucks, by Five Hour Energy, by Georgia Power, and by AT&T. Bases empty, Braves half of the eighth inning. Atlanta up eight to seven. And the new pitcher on for Walt Weiss is right-hander Wilton Lopez. He's just hoping for something better than his last outing against Miami four days ago. A third of an inning, four hits, four runs all earned. And he gave up those four runs in nine pitches. He came over from the Astros last December. That was a deal for Alex White and Alex Gillingham. Remember Alex White? A real high prospect, I believe, with Cleveland that the Rockies were hoping to make one of their bedrocks in rotation. But with the crazy pitch counts and all that stuff last year, it didn't work out for White. Now he's in the Houston organization. I'm not sure what Steve Bedrosian has to do with all that, but okay. Toward third and foul. Two balls, two strikes. This guy is allowing a 330 average to right handed hitters, but lefties are only hitting 322. Schnakies. What a right he's hitting against him. Three what? They are 38 for 115. That's a 330 mark. Lefty's 29 for 90. That fastball has been very straight. And the seats. Upton lost the bat. It went all the way back to the screen. He'll do it again, three and two. Would like a little more stick em, please. Final in Pittsburgh, Pirates beat the Cardinals 9 2. Half game lead now for St. Louis. And it is a doubleheader tomorrow. They haven't announced the pitchers for. Game one, Lions and Burnett are scheduled in game two of that series. And Upton is called out on strikes again. He kicks the bat, drops the helmet, and the inning comes to a close. We go to the ninth inning. Who will try to finish it off for Atlanta? We'll find out next. It's Jordan Walden time. And it's actually his first save opportunity of the year. He's had 11 holds. But he's on now to get his first save in an Atlanta uniform. That's certainly a far cry from his first save in the big leagues. And 
he's a former teammate of Scott Downs in Anaheim, so I'm sure he can kind of show him the ropes around here. You bet. A couple of years ago with the Angels, Walton saved 32 games, so closing one run affairs, not a new experience for the big right hander out of Fort Worth, Texas. And hopefully he can indeed finish it off, give Kimbrell the night off, and keep the Braves winning ways going. Here at home. That's what the crew would like to talk about on Braves Live, presented by ATT. That follows us tonight. We'll hear from the skipper, Freddie Gonzalez. We'll hear from the Braves locker room, maybe even a comment or two from new Braves, Scott Downs. And there are plenty of offensive highlights to show you, as well as Brandon Beachy made his season debut tonight. In the ninth inning, Walden will face former Georgia Tech star Charlie Blackman. He'll lead off. Blackman two for six as a pinch hitter. A good guy to retire. Yeah, get that first guy in a one run game. Very important. Especially a fast one. Oh and two. Jordan pitched last night. Perfect inning with a strikeout against the Cardinals. Two shutout innings in that series. Swing and a miss. Just like Craig Kimbrell, Walden features a mid 90s fastball. One away in the ninth. High target from Evan. And it worked. Here's Fowler. Got to keep an eye on this guy. He might drop a bunt down. The Rockies have a ton of infield hits as a club. In fact, they have a hundred of them. Fowler has a double and a run scored in his four trips. Jordan is bringing it. Another one at 97. First five innings of this game, these two teams were combined seven for 15 with runners in scoring position. 0 for 1 since combined. And Walt Weiss and the Rockies blew a 5 nothing lead tonight. Atlanta got six in the third, two in the fifth. And that's where we stand, 8 7. His pitching has taken over since the fifth inning. Two balls, two strikes. And now it's full to a fast runner, Dexter Fowler. Lost him. One out walk. So Fowler with 14 steals is at first representing the tying run. And DJ LeMay who's coming up. And Jordan Walden's not exactly a blur to the plate. He's a little slow with that long stride. So a chance for Fowler to get a good jump if he picks the right pitch. Joe mentioned LeMahieu, not much power, only one home run. And a slider strike. <laughs> LeMahieu 
Lee, who's hit into five double plays this year. Six would end the game. Good stop by Gaddis. Big play there by Evan. That breaking ball spinning back to him after hitting the dirt. All over it. Good play. One ball, one strike. Fowler's running. Line drive, base hit center field. Fowler on his way to third, and the Rockies have him at the corners with one out. And now you got to face Gonzalez. He's had a perfect night at the plate. He's four for four. That may well have been just a straight hit and run because I was watching. Fowler and he did not have a very big lead and he was just kind of bent over on his knees so as not to draw attention to himself. He did not look like he was in a stealing position and of course took off. Gonzalez in his career is 0 for 2 against Walton. He has struck out twice. Boy, strike out here would be huge. He's ahead, nothing and one. Went the other way with a base hit his last time up. Missed inside, even count. Their closer begins to loosen up. Rex Brothers has a little finger biting, fingernail biting might commence here. Dangerous pitch, two balls and a strike. Line drive center field, the game's tied, 8 8. A 5 for 5 night for Carlos Gonzalez, his second five hit game of the year. And the Rockies off the deck in the ninth inning. Have three straight runners reach after the strikeout to begin the inning. Well, the walk got it started too. Breaking ball and got him on his front foot a little bit. But this guy hits the ball hard to all fields. Don't see too many five for five nights. He's driven in two, scored a run, and swiped two bases. Yeah, the Braves aren't out of trouble yet. No. You've got Tulowitzki, then Kadire, then Elton. I mean, it's a relentless offense for Colorado, too. Some managers, in the case like Craig Kimbrell tonight, where he's worked three straight nights, and you got to give him a day off. I mean, Sometimes they won't even let him go to the bullpen for fear of being tempted to use him again. I don't know if Craig's in the pen or not. One ball, no strikes for Tulowitzki. The new reliever, Scott Downs, loosening up again. Second time he's been up. So we will have a bottom of the ninth inning. The only question is, what will the score be? 
Fly ball center. Hayward going back. He's going to have room. And Mayhew will tag from second. The throw is going to come in toward third. In fact, both runners tag up. And that could be a costly play as Gonzalez moves up 90 feet as well on the fly ball by Tudowitzki. Three to the wrong base there. He was too deep to have any shot at third base. And to keep the force play in order, the throw needed to come into second base. They can walk Kadire now anyway and set up the same situation. And then you got the lefty in the bullpen and Helton coming up. We might see Downs come in to pitch to him. But that's again pick your poison for we showed you what Todd Helton's numbers are in his career against lefties a 297 lifetime mark one for six in his career against downs with a double. Crazy game. Ball four. Crazy game. We said he was going to come down to the bullpens. And one away for Scott Downs to debut as a Brave. A tie game. Base is loaded, and he's got to face a man that might be headed to the Hall of Fame someday in Todd Helton in the top of the ninth inning. Downs will make his debut as a Brave when we come back to Turner Field in a moment. It's an 8 8 game. And during the commercial break, Joe, Evan Gaddis went to the mound because he's never seen Scott Downs. No, and with a runner at second base, they're going to have to go through their series of signs. Dan Ugla thinks it's really fun. <laughs> so yeah. Freddie Freeman. But probably might have been somebody said, hey, welcome. Welcome to Atlanta. Bases loaded and game on the line. Need an out here. He's 6 2, 220 out of Kentucky and Kentucky University. I take that back. A Kentucky native. I don't. Yeah, he was Kentucky University, third round pick in '97, as you said earlier, by the Cubs, and really pitching well for the Angels. A 1.84 ERA. Had 29 straight scoreless outings between May 5th and July 23rd, and as I said, one for six in his career against Todd Helton. Sinker, slider guy. He won't probably won't throw that uh, change up turned over change up to the lefty here won't need to. And let's see how this works out for him. First appearance. And it's Todd Helton in the batter's box. Line back to the mound. That was good. I'm sure that's exactly how he drew it up. Bottom of the ninth inning, 8 8 game.
Got Downs in his Braves debut. And well received in the dugout. I love the fact that after he caught it, he kind of had his glove up to his face and took a look over at Todd Helton and shrugged like, can't help it. <laughs> Hang with him. Yeah. Tom? Guys, it's been a long time coming for Scott Downs to end up in a Braves uniform. He was a 12th round pick of Atlanta in 1994. Turned down the Braves to go to university. It was a long time ago. It's because it was. Nomar Garcia Parra was drafted that season out of Georgia Tech. And a guy by the name of Heinz Ward was drafted by the Marlins. He decided to play football that same season. I don't know why. Freddie Freeman leads off the bottom of the ninth inning. And Matt Bell Isle is on to pitch for Colorado. He's pitched in more games since 2010 than any other major league pitcher. He was in 80 games last year for the Rockies. And 49 now this season. And a former Braves draft choice who signed with the Braves and was later traded to Cincinnati. Well, one swing. Let's go home. Two balls and a strike. It's fouled off Freeman's foot. Two balls, two strikes. To the Rockies run, a leadoff walk here wouldn't hurt. He's only walked 12 in his 48 games. And it's not to be. Freeman's down on strikes. One away in the Atlanta ninth. Here's Gaddis. Strikeout bug has jumped up tonight. It's 10, I believe. Seven of them, though, have come since the sixth inning. High hopper towards short. The ball dies. Tulowitzki gets there and makes the play. And two men are out in the ninth. Johnson will try to keep the inning alive. He's two for four, two runs, two RBIs. Eight, eight in the ninth. been doing just about everything else. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see him take one out of here. Oh and two. That's one tonight. They beat the Marlins 6-5. Those two clubs have been playing real good ball lately. The Mets still on the road. A one run game. And he's swinging a miss. Free baseball in Atlanta. We go to the 10th.
Braves seven and four in extra innings this year. Colorado is five and seven in extra innings. Scott Downs remains in the ball game. And as the Rockies prepare for the top of the inning, let's check in again with Tom Hart. All right, Chip, thanks. One of the reasons Scott Downs was available is because of what's happening with this Angels roster that was expected to compete in the American League West. Albert Pujols was just placed on the disabled list with a torn plantar fascia, and I asked Frank Wren about that this afternoon. If that had an impact on him being available, and certainly that was about the time the talk started to heat up. I also asked him what's next with two days left in the trade deadline, 4 o'clock on Wednesday. He said, well, now we move on to broader discussions because every day more clubs are deciding who and where they are, meaning just two, three days ago, a lot of teams thought they could still contend for postseason berth. That's changing by the hour. That's a good point, Tom, as Will and Rosario singles on the first pitch. And he starts the 10th with a leadoff single. He's got a three-hit game. I think with the addition of the second wild card, the job of Major League General Manager Joe has gotten even more difficult for the point that Tom just made. Teams like the Phillies, for example, with big TV networks with a lot of tickets sold for the final two months of the year, it's really tough telling your paying customers, we're cashing in with two months of the season left to go. Yeah, I think you, I think that's why there hasn't been that much movement because the price has been so high from teams that might theoretically be out of it. That, that concession speech is hard to pass on to your customers. And something Frank told me before the game that has been a topic at all the general managers meetings has been moving the non waiver trade deadline back I mean, closer towards September. And Frank's suggestion was August 10th, August 15th, rather than July 31st, to give everybody an ev More another time. another couple of weeks, and so you can't bail out on your club the way you constructed it in the off season. I think that probably is a good idea. And he believes that the lack of activity at this trading deadline, at least to this point, will spur further discussions along that line in the off season. As Arenado bats, and he pushes a bunt toward Freeman, who thought about a play at second, but takes the sure out at first. Sacrifice. Rosario at second with one out. To your point, Chip, I think when um, when that rule with that trading deadline was in place, and who knows how long ago that was established, there just weren't that many teams. There were a lot fewer teams. There certainly wasn't the, the wild card, let alone a second wild card team. So there were a lot of teams that had already drawn that line in the sand at this point where they were in or out. And <laughs> look, the Braves have what, an eight and a half game lead right now? Yeah. If the Braves have a bad week and the Nationals or the Phillies have a good week, that could be cut in half in the blink of an eye. As Charlie Culberson pinch hits for Belle Isle here in the Colorado 10th. So will the Braves make another move? We will see. I believe the deadline is 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock on 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Thank you, Joe. And a bouncing ball toward Johnson. Chris has to unload quickly and gets his man at first. Culberson's the second out. Rosario to third for Dexter Fowler. Fowler's a switch hitter and he's actually hitting 100 points higher right handed. Came into the game hitting 340 right handed, 241 left handed. He's never faced downs before. His one out walk led to the game tying run one inning ago. The thing about this acquisition that's so terrific for Atlanta is that here he is. His first night in a Braves uniform, he comes in in a bases loaded spot with the game on the line, and you can't scare him. I mean, he might have been a little nervous, but you'd never know it. He's 
He's been there and done that. And somebody with less experience may not have been able to handle that situation quite as well. Low and in to Fowler. One ball, one strike. Pretty good pitch. By my count, Kimbrell and Varvaro are the only two relievers left in the Braves' bullpen. And you know, Freddie does not want to use Craig Kimball, so maybe just Anthony. Fowler lines one into the seats. Do it again, this time with a one two count. And Marvaro is up. Pitcher spot for the Braves is due. Third in the tenth inning. Thirty one thousand want to see this inning end with Fowler. We'll have to wait another pitch. Just a little out of the zone. Pretty good patience on the part of Fowler not to chase it. He somehow got a piece of that. Fastball in that two seamer that was kind of backing up and going in. A swing and a miss. The ball got away from Gaddis, but the peg to first in time retires Fowler and the Rockies. They strand the go ahead run 90 feet away. The Braves up for their turn in the 10th. Still tied 8 8. Downs an inning and a third of scoreless relief. And 
Let's see if Atlanta can end it here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Extra innings is always presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. New pitcher for Colorado is Edgemer Escalona. Big guy from Venezuela, 6'4, 235. 26 years old. There are his numbers. His last three outings have resulted in scoreless relief. Last work two days ago against Miami. An inning gave up a hit, zeros across. Last year, 22 games in Colorado had an ERA of six. He's been up and down with him over the last four years now. Ugla, Simmons, and then the pitcher spot for the Braves. Good cut and foul back for a strike. A two RBI night for Ugla. He now has 51 for the year. Just a bit outside from old double E. One and two. Again, a ball and two strikes. He's got a good fastball. Yeah, upper 90s fastball. Slider he threw earlier in the count was 89. Two and two. Guy on that usually leads to trouble in extra innings. Good at bat. Dance fighting hard in the tenth. Broken his back. Might have broken his back in the first swing. Sounded funny when he fouled it back to the screen. Braves still have Paul Yanish on the bench, Gerald Laird, and Brian McCann. They have Reed Johnson as well, but he is supposedly out of action tonight and maybe tomorrow. The 2 2 pitch. Full count. Dan's not afraid to take a walk. And he just did a flinch. And he's aboard to start the 10th. What a good at bat. 
bounce those sliders foul. Stayed alive. Excellent at bat. Nine pitches. So now a whole lot of options for Freddy Gonzalez. With Edwardson Simmons out there, he's two for four. Might be a good guy to hit and run with. Again, Edwardson hasn't struck out since the All Star break. If you bunt him over with Brian McCann in the on deck circle, they're going to put Brian on. They'll pitch around him. Which would be all that bad either. But Brian would be hitting in the. No, the Downs is batting in the eight spot, so he'd be hitting for the pitcher, right? No balls and a strike. Nothing in two. Fly ball well hit left center field. That's going to get down. It's going to go to the wall. Ugly around second. On his way to third. He's getting waved. Relay throw. Right. The Braves walk off and win 9 Not often that on a walk off you get beat up at third base, but that's what happened tonight. And there's a guy who just got here about seven o'clock tonight, and he gets the win. What do we say in the third inning? We hit last. Yeah, that's right. Good and call. It, and Atlanta in ten beats the Rockies nine eight. Your final score. A Braves win for Scott Downs in his big league debut. A triple for Andrelton Simmons. Wins the game for Atlanta. And the Braves, Joe, remain perfect here at home on the homestand. Sweeping the Cardinals and winning game one against Colorado. And with tonight's hitting hero is Tom Hart. All right, Chip, thanks. Andrelton Simmons, what did they do to you on the bases? <laughs> I don't know, man. That, that one hurt. That one hurt a little bit. I had to close my eyes and just wear it for a little bit. Let's take a, a talk about your bat for a second. I thought you were going to fall all the way over to the dugout on that second swing. What was the difference between swinging through your shoes and then coming up with the game winner? Um, I mean, the, ball, the first, the first one, the slider didn't break like I thought it was, so it stayed in on me a little bit. The second one, he let me get extended, and I squared it up pretty good. This was a crazy game. I mean, six in the third, nine runs to win this one. Can this offense do this, especially with this lineup on a regular basis? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're probably not going to do it every day, but we're definitely a, a team that can put up a lot of runs in the game. Congratulations. You deserve a shower. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Chip. Andrew from Simmons with the game winner. Fun night, Joe Simpson. An offensive night. After great pitching held the Braves and Cardinals down in the first three of the homestand, the Braves are up and score nine times on 12 hits and winning extras at each final. Back with more in a minute.